Hey guys, Peppo here, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I want to talk about the talisman system in the Monster Hunter series, and why Capcom should seriously consider improving such a system for Monster Hunter 6. The talismans appear for the first time in the series with third generation, in Monster Hunter 3. Talismans since their creation are basically items that can be worn and grant up to two skills, which stack with the armor skills, plus they can have decoration slots as well. In the 3rd and 4th generations, the talismans were always obtainable by mining. In fact, the easiest way to farm them was simply by mining over and over. This was specifically the case for the 3rd gen, so in Monster Hunter 3, Monster Hunter Portable 3rd and Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. There wasn't another good way to get charms. With 4U, things started to change a bit. Certain good charms could be obtained even by completing guild quests, special quests that could be leveled up, raising the difficulty and the rewards. Moreover, a new important feature made its appearance, the talisman pot. You could meld your charms inside this pot and receive other charms depending on what melding you chose. You need specific materials called frenzy shards or crystals to meld your talismans, and such materials could be get by hunting frenzy monsters. However, like in the third generation, Mining was the easiest way to obtain charms, and such a method was largely utilized by the community to easily farm talismans, even in the 4th gen. Not much different is Monster Hunter Generations, where you simply went mining and then meld the talismans you found to reroll them. While in Generations Ultimate, other than simply mining, there actually was a faster way which consisted in completing the sub-quest of a particular quest by hunting a Brachidios. In this way you didn't have to mine over and over anymore, but just hunt Brachidios in this quest to get a considerably large number of talismans in the rewards for completing the subquest. In all these Monster Hunter games I just mentioned, talismans were random, completely. There was no way to know which charm you would end up getting at the end of a quest. The system was composed of a fixed number of charm tables, containing tens of thousands of talismans each. Every time you load up the game, you were assigned a specific charm table so you could potentially obtain the best talismans from such table. Due to a bug, in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, the charm table you were assigned to was decided at the moment of creating the character, permanently, without leaving the player a chance to switch charm tables, other than simply start over with a new character. Outside of Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate's talisman system, which is objectively the worst system ever conceived, in all the 3rd and 4th gen games we have a talisman system that is completely random and plays a considerably important role in the endgame. Talisman farming, in fact, is the real endgame after you crafted all the armor pieces and jewels you need for your build, so if there is something you can improve in your build, it's always the talisman at the end of the day. In 4 Ultimate you also had armor and weapon relics, which is simply another base RNG system for the equipment. With Monster Hunter Ward and then Iceborne, the talisman system radically changed. Talismans could now get crafted like jewels were back in the old games. The RNG behind this system doesn't exist anymore, but you only have to get all the required materials and then craft or upgrade the talisman you want to obtain. Great, right? Well, yeah. It is indeed a huge improvement from the old games, but obtaining jewels now becomes RNG. They simply swapped the decoration system with the charm one. However, differently than in the old games, jewels are really commonly obtained in the rewards of the quest and you don't have to go mining anymore, fortunately. This time the melding pot was used for decorations and other materials. Compared to obtaining a perfect talisman with both skills maxed out and 3 slots, the so-called god charm, getting an attack boost jewel plus is much more common, but it's always RNG at the end of the day. Things changed once again with the next Monster Hunter game, Monster Hunter Rise. Capcom decided to return to the old system of jewel crafting and swap the systems another time. The talismans returned to be RNG based once again. However, this time around the talismans were not obtainable by mining or as a reward at the end of a quest, but only and exclusively via the melding pot. You can now melt monsters materials to get talismans. This is the great innovation of Rise. Stronger monsters will have materials with higher values for the melding, and so the charm farming will rotate around them. Finally, things look like improved considerably with Sunbreak, the Rise expansion. With the title of Day 3, Capcom introduced a new type of melding that lets you choose and fix one skill for the talisman created. This new melding, called Aurora Melding, is the first method that allows the player to always obtain the skill he decided to pick, partially removing the RNG behind the talisman system. You still aren't able to tell what the second skill will be, which level both skills you will get at, and the number of slots, but at least we can choose the first skill, it's still an important improvement. 
I personally think Capcom decided to make the talisman farming less RNG in Sunbreak simply because they added the Curio Crafting system, which is another RNG based system that lets you get random skills on top of the skills you already have on your armor, and so they probably wanted to limit the amount of RNG involved in the endgame, but that's just my assumption. Anyway, with Sunbreak talisman farming and sniping gets much easier than how it ever was in older games in the 3rd and 4th generations, and that's a positive aspect that goes in the right direction. So here is the question, do we actually need a completely RNG based system in every Monster Hunter game like the talismans, the relics in 4 Ultimate or the Cure in Sunbreak? In other words, why do we keep getting such heavily dependent RNG systems in the first place? Before the 3rd gen and the addition of talismans, the only RNG involved in the game affected the materials you got during quests, like in the rewards. Once you slayed all the monsters, farmed all the weapons and armor, and crafted all the decorations, you basically were done with that game. You needed an insane number of hours to fully complete Freedom Unite, for example, even though everything was craftable and there was no RNG involved outside of the rewards. But sooner or later, you will eventually finish it. Maybe that's something Capcom didn't like, they might want to create a game that never ends, no matter how many hours you spend. That's why Capcom probably thought of a system that could prolong the game forever, and the only apparent solution might have been to rely entirely on the RNG. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying RNG is bad, a certain degree of RNG in this type of game is necessary in my opinion, it is acceptable. However, creating endgame systems that entirely rely on the RNG potentially influence the gameplay and are completely unaffected by the player's skill is a serious problem for me as a regular player. I don't really like reaching the end game and spinning the wheel of fortune over and over until I get what I was looking for. It's boring and there is no skill in doing it. You don't need to be good at the game to get lucky, that's what I'm saying. Evident progress was made throughout the years for the talisman system in Monster Hunter, nobody can negate that. Originally, we were forced to go around the map mining ores to hope to get some charms, then we got the chance to reroll in talismans we had by melding them, sometimes we could get them in the rewards, and finally, in Sunbreak, we can fix the first skill of the charm we are looking for by simply melding monsters' materials via the Aurora melding. The steps go in the right direction. The farther we go, the less RNG should be involved in this system, that's my opinion. But if you make the charm system less RNG dependent, but on the other hand you add other systems which rely even more on the RNG, then we are back to square one. I really hope the Cure Armor Crafting was just a blunder and that nothing close to this system will ever return in a future Monster Hunter game, but this is a topic for another video. That said, how can the talisman system be improved so that the endgame continues to be grinding but not entirely depending on the RNG? I'm sure Capcom already have some ideas on how to improve the talisman system as we saw they did already in Sunbreak, but today I want to give you my own idea. Recently, I've been playing this new hunting game called Wild Hearts, and like in Monster Hunter, there is a talisman system. So let's give a look at what the developers of this game conceived for this system. Like in Monster Hunter, we have up to two skills per charm. In the game, there are no decorations, so there are no slots in the charms. Each skill has a max value and a minimum one exactly like in Monster Hunter. But here is the first difference. Each charm has a cost. You can equip up to 5 talismans, but you can't exceed the total cost of 50. Of course, charms are definitely less powerful than Monster Hunter, simply because you can equip 5 of them at the same time, so it makes sense. The higher the quality of the skill and its level, the higher will be the cost, naturally. And here is the first observation that I want to make. Because of this cost, there is no good charm for a set pair of skills. In other words, if we have 5 talismans with the 2 skills we want at the highest values, the cost of the charm is probably gonna be above 10, which means we won't be able to equip all 5 of them, as we will exceed the cost of 50. This means that even a talisman with such skills but not at max level can still be a good charm, since the cost will be lower, and so we might be able to equip it and stack it with the others. This little aspect is extremely important in my opinion as you are not always gonna look for the talisman with the skills at the highest values, which means even less powerful talismans will still be as important, because their cost will be lower. So this new aspect of the talisman, the cost, is making it possible to balance the talismans with the same skills, something which is definitely not the case in Monster Hunter. If you have a charm with attack boost level 3 and weakness exploit level 1, and then you have the same charm but weakness exploit instead is at level 2, then this last one it will always be superior. Having more valid talismans instead of just a single one that outshines all the others is one way to make the grind less annoying and make it easier to find valuable talismans. But this system wouldn't be much better if it was just this alone. 
Simply adding a coast won't improve the talisman system of Monster Hunter that much. We need to reduce the RNG behind it as well. And what if I tell you that Wild Hearts does exactly that? In this game, every monster has a pool of talismans that can be dropped. More specifically, each monster has a charms with certain skills that can be obtained after slaying such a monster. It is something similar to the charm tables, but this time each table is assigned to a specific monster, so if you want a talisman with a certain skill, you want to fight that specific monster. For example, if we need to find quick shift on the charm, we know we have to hunt Agnosome, because this monster has a pool of charms that contain the skill we are looking for. Wouldn't it be amazing if charm tables would be assigned to each monster instead of being completely random? The RNG would still be there, because of course you are not gonna get the talisman you want that easily, but at least you know you can get that charm eventually if you keep slaying that specific monster. And even if you don't get it immediately, you will most likely get the talisman with at least one skill you were looking for. But not just that, there is also another merit to this innovative system. It gives value to all the monsters of the game. It wouldn't make sense to slay the same monster over and over, what basically we were doing in Generations Ultimate with Rakidios or more recently with Narwhine Rise before the title updates. Every monster would be important because it can give talismans that only that monster can give, not the others. To make it fair, they could give a range of levels of certain skills to the low ranked monsters, and then its higher ranked version could increase such range. If there are tempered or arch tempered version of such monsters, then they could increase the slots you can get on the talismans for example, or they can simply allow talisman crafting like in Ward and Iceborne and use this system for the decorations. Each monster then will have a pool of certain decorations that can drop. Doesn't that sound good? I generally think Monster Hunter can take inspiration from the talisman system of Wild Hearts, changing it and adapting it more to his own series, but more importantly, improving it by reducing the RNG behind it and making it more enjoyable. I really hope Capcom will think about it for the next Monster Hunter 6. So now you guys tell me, what do you think of the talisman system of Monster Hunter? Have you ever thought about it? Would you like to have an RNG based system for decorations like in Ward or you prefer what we have now in Sunbreak for the talismans? Do you have other interesting ideas Capcom should consider for the next Monster Hunter 6 talisman slash decoration system? Share them in the comment section, I'm looking forward to all your comments. And with that being said, see you in the next video, bye!